Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer, I thought in this lesson I would answer a question that's actually been asked to me numerous times by different viewers of my tutorials. And the question is always the same. How do you add logos into your credit crawl? So I thought in this tutorial, I would show you how we're going to go about doing that. But believe it or not, we're actually not going to do it inside of Media Composer at all. We're actually going to do it inside of Photoshop. Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, well, Kev, how would you create a credit crawl in Photoshop and then import it into Media Composer? Because it's not going to let you import it the way that you want to, because it's going to get it and it's going to crush it down to fit the size of the frame. Well, believe it or not, there's sort of a roundabout way we can go about doing that. And once you see how simple it is, I guarantee you're going to be using the technique over and over again. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Photoshop and let's get started. Okay, so I'm just going to command tab into Adobe's Photoshop CC. Now this technique is going to work really with any version of Photoshop. You don't need to have the Creative Cloud version of it. What we're going to do is we're going to navigate over to File and I'm simply going to come down to New. And I'm just going to come to a preset here. I'm going to choose Film and Video. And I'm just going to choose a 720p 2997 uh, frame size, 1280 by 720 because that's the format of the footage that I'm working with inside of Media Composer or really Symphony for that matter. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the background color to be the actual background color which as we can see is black. I'm going to get rid of that after the fact but for right now we're just going to leave it as black and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the canvas size whatever canvas size I happen to need obviously based on the credit crawl that I'm creating. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up to image, I'm going to come up to canvas size and we're just going to anchor it to the top here and I'm just going to make the height 20. Just why not? We'll just pick a round number here and you'll see now that this is all over top of black and let's create a basic credit crawl here. I'm just going to type in produced by. And I'm just going to shrink this down obviously just so we can see what's going on here. There we go, even a little bit smaller probably. We'll do it about that size just so that we can see a lot of them in here. And I'm going to position it right about there. And what we're going to do here is I'm just going to type in, of course, produced by me. And of course, this was directed by, and of course, it was me again. Of course, it was edited by me. It was watched by me. And what I should probably do just to make my life easier is if I just highlight my name here since I'm going to be using the same name over and over again. And I'm just going to come down and it was, of course, uh, we got produced, directed, it was shot by me. And we'll just add one more in here. And it was, of course, uh, you know, the video was PVR'd by me. There we go. So now basically we have a credit crawl that we could use, you know, in a program like, uh, you know, Final Cut or Premiere or something like that. But in most cases, Media Composer editors think that they're just limited to the title tool or the marquee title tool for creating their crawls. You're not at all. Let me show you what I mean by this. What I'm going to do is just turn the background off. And the first thing I want to do is just add a drop shadow to my text here. So I'm just going to come down to drop shadow. We'll just make sure the blend mode here is set to normal. And we're just going to make sure the opacity is at 100. We'll just adjust the spread a bit, adjust the size a bit, and the distance just ever so slightly. So that's pretty good. Now, if I was happy with this, I could save it out and I could, you know, then get back into Media Composer and I could show you this technique. But I don't want to do that because the whole point of this was about adding logos in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw in a logo over here and I'm going to throw in a logo up here. And there's just going to be something that I'm going to create here. So let's, uh, you know, we'll stick with blue for right now. What I'm going to do is just come up to my blue marquee here and I'm just going to create an oval it's kind of like such and of course I want this on a new layer so let's just create a new layer I'm just going to hit shift and the large delete key on the Mac and we're just going to fill this with the foreground color just like such and I'm just going to type something in here and we're just going to call this appropriately enough logo and let's just do something a little bit stylistic with it here we'll just sort of make it big position it kind of right about there Looking pretty nice. What I'm going to do with my text layer here is I'm just going to right click and I'm going to copy the layer style. And of course, we're just going to paste that layer style into both these elements here just so that our logo stands out. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, combine these elements. I'm just going to merge visible, command, shift, and E, control, shift, and E, obviously, from my Windows friends out there. And you can see that we can also merge the layers. Now, actually, what I actually did was merge the layers, which was just command and E. I just selected the layers I wanted and I merged the layers together. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take this and I'm going to duplicate it. I could obviously make this whatever I wanted to, but we're just going to take it and duplicate it. And we're just going to hypothetically assume that this is a different logo. And I'm just going to stick it right down here like such. 
OK. So I'm ready to save this out. Now I'm just going to remove the background for now. And I might want to get in at some point and change this credit crawl. So I'm not going to uh, you know, merge all this down, save it out as a merge down element. I would save this out as a Photoshop file, sort of stick it in my back pocket so I always have it. And what I'm also going to do is just save it out as a PNG file. Now why PNG? Well, I like PNGs just because everything's contained in the one file. Anything here that I see as checkerboard is going to be keyable. We're just going to call this credit crawl. We're going to say save. So compression is none, interlace is none. We'll say OK. And of course, I now have it on my desktop looking a little bit like this. Now, obviously, this is white. White is going to be transparent when we get into Media Composer or Symphony. So what I'm going to do is simply Command Tab into Avid's Media Composer. And I'm going to navigate up to Clip. And let's just create a new title. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose the Marquee Title Tool. Now, inside the Marquee Title Tool, what I'm going to need to do here is I'm just going to zoom back. Is the first thing I need to figure out is how long do I want to make this crawl? Well, I know, and what I'll just do is quit out a marquee for a second. I know that this timeline right now, if I select the entire timeline, actually, I don't even need to select it. I can just come all the way down to the end. I can see that it's nine seconds long. It's actually 10. You'll see that we start at 59 uh, seconds right there, and we just go down to the nine second mark. And what I should actually do here is just right click, say sequence report. Let's just make sure this starts at the one hour mark. We'll say apply changes, cancel out of that. And there we go, 10 seconds, perfect. So I know that this crawl needs to be 10 seconds. So let's again head back up to clip. Let's come down to new title. I'm just gonna select the marquee tool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate up to file and I'm gonna come down to import and I'm simply gonna say image. It's gonna ask me what image do I wanna import? I'm gonna import the credit crawl and say open. You'll see the credit crawl has now appeared inside the marquee tool. And you'll see because I made it 1280 by 720, it's the proper width, but a little bit too tall. But that's OK for the purposes of what we're doing. What I want to do is I want to animate this coming in from the bottom, scrolling right through to the top in a span of 10 seconds. Now, you'll see right now, right down here at the bottom, this timeline is only five seconds long. So to extend it, all we have to do is navigate up to file. I'm just going to come down to duration. Let's just set this to be 10 seconds long. I'm going to say OK. And what I need to do now is to simply come up to the tool sets and I'm going to choose basic animation. We're actually already on basic animation, which is OK. And what I want to do is turn animation mode on. I'm just going to zoom back here. Now with animation mode on, what's going to happen is a keyframe is going to be added at our first frame right here. All I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to come down to the timeline, come all the way down to the end here. And we're just going to take our crawl and we're just going to crawl it all the way up like such to the end. Right about there. Now I could obviously, you know, make sure just the Kevin P. McAuliffe leaves the frame, but I'm okay with this. I'm just going to turn animation mode off now. Take a look at this. I'm going to come back and we now have a credit crawl moving through our frame with our logos attached to it. So now all I need to do is simply come up to file. I'm going to come down and I'm going to save to bin. I'm just going to call this untitled. Doesn't even really matter. I'm just going to say OK. Now, of course, what's important to keep in mind is that Marquee actually has to render this. So what's actually going on in the background is that it's making an image sequence and it's saving it to a location on your actual hard drive. What happens is, is that once it's done making this image sequence and we get back into Media Composer Symphony, it's actually going to import that image sequence for us to then take and use in our timeline. That's actually what's sort of going on behind the scenes. But take a look at how fast this is processing. This is again, 10 second credit crawl. All of our logos are included. It's going to be done in just a second here. And remember, it's going to be done doing what it needs to do in Marquee, which is exporting those individual uh, frames. Now we're actually back in the editing application. I'll just send this to sequences and I'll just make it DNX HD 90 and I'll just say save. Now you'll see that what's happening now is that it's importing the actual image sequence right now. Then what it's going to go do is it's going to go through and it's going to import the alpha channel. And basically once that's done, it's going to be ready to be taken and dropped into our timeline and be ready to go. And of course, the cool thing is that if I need to get in and adjust it at any time, I can simply right click and say edit title. Here's our credit crawl. I'm simply going to take it, hit T on the keyboard, hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to drop it in and take a look at what I have now. I now have a credit crawl with logos in it, ready to be put into any production I happen to be working on. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.